The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. As always, we'd like to come to you at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And what do we have today? Well, we're up six and eh, six and a half points on the S&P cash. Uh, Dow's down 15, mostly on the week. Uh, weakness of the usual suspects of the last week, which is Boeing. It's down about three bucks, but no biggie. Still holding that support area. NASDAQ's up 40. Russell's up 17. And uh, that tells you a lot. Mr. Russell's kind of trying to play a little catch up up today. Uh, getting close to the 8,000 uh, mark on the uh, NASDAQ composite um, at uh, 7,949. Uh, but, uh, you know, we just had the Fed uh, come out with their minutes of their meetings. Uh, and probably the only thing is you know, they are literally saying there will not be a rate uh, hike increase uh, this year. No word on what they're doing on bond uh, repurchasing, at least nothing I've seen yet in the one-liners. Maybe that'll come throughout the break. In fact, why don't we take a quick look and see what that TLT is doing. Uh, so we're up, what, 15 cents at 124.14. And then just down a little bit on that 2 o'clock news. So, uh, yeah, it was up, uh, where was that? It's up 124.47, saying about 30 cents lower uh, and bouncing around. So quiet day, of course. Uh, I've been thinking that we are waiting and have been waiting for earnings uh, come Friday morning. We'll talk about that. But the uh, market's just kind of being flat um, and quiet. And uh, I keep up bringing up generally the old chestnuts. Uh, that have been around for a while or are there for a reason. And uh, do not be short. A quiet market is probably one of those. Uh, as I said, maybe individual positions, uh, there may be an overwhelming case, but you certainly don't have the wind to your back right now, which is one of the things you like to have, uh, declining markets and being short. Uh, and uh, you got a lot of people all thinking that there's going to be a trade deal announced any minute. And probably not. Probably going to take a while to get all that done. Uh, but uh, that's about it. There's uh, not much else going on today. It's kind of quiet. Um, apparently, we're going to get F an FOMC member who I've actually met, Herman Cain. Uh, I uh, met him why he was uh, running, uh, what was it, Godfather's Pizza. That's what it was, Godfather's Pizza. Somewhere in the early 80s, maybe even earlier than that, maybe 1978, probably somewhere in there. I was young and I didn't know anything. I just thought he was an old guy that smelled kind of old already. That was in the 80s. That's all I can remember. He may not have, but uh, you know how memories are, especially when you're not paying attention. I was stuffing my face with some pizza after church on Sunday. Eh, well, got to be it. So what else is going on today? That's it. A lot of hurry up and wait. We'll watch uh, how the market reacts as it goes through these minutes. But uh, again, uh, much more about Friday. Uh, and uh, let's take a quick look at here. Um, uh, let's get to this uh, Thursday, Friday. Where we have J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, PNC Bank, and Infosys. I don't think that there's much else really to talk about. Uh, Monday we get Citigroup in the morning. The Goldman, the Goldman Sachs, and uh, see if there's anything after the bell on Monday. Eh, not really to talk about. We get into Tuesday. 
Bank of America, Tuesday morning, United Health Group, Johnson & Johnson. So we're going to start getting kind of a taste of that. And of course, we've got about another week before the deluge starts, about the 19th uh, for earnings. And so we'll get some action out here. Uh, but Mr. Market, not a lot of volume up, not a lot of volume down. We've been talking about uh, that issue this week. Uh, and as we get to hump day, the camel's favorite day. I always like that ad. Uh, but yesterday ended up uh, totally with about 6.4 billion shares for the day. The day before that is 6.2. And of course, you know, if we go back to the 15th of March, we had almost 11 billion shares. So it's not a big deal. And whether you look at it in shares or dollars, uh, yesterday, $284 billion. Uh, the day before that, $269 billion. Uh, but if we go back and look at those uh, big volume days, uh, like we were talking about, uh, to, 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 what was that? That was uh, 5 .8, uh, $508 billion. So, you know, we're doing about five eighths that big day. So pretty quiet on the Western front. We'll keep an eye on that. Uh, what else is going on? Well, it's like I said, it's just quiet. You can hear the quiet, but uh, you can interrupt that quiet by giving me a call at 877-927-6648 or emailing me at path at tfnn.com. See what I did there? Eh, kind of interesting thing. Okay, um, what else do we have? Okay. What else? Uh, okay. Oh, I'm a little distracted here, just wanting to keep an eye on the markets out here. Now we're up about four on the S&P cash, so eh, kind of quiet. Anyway, um, oh, I was going to do some history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. Almost nodded off. On this day in 1963, the U.S. Thresher atomic submarine sinks in the Atlantic Ocean, killing the entire crew, 129 sailors and civilians were lost when the sub unexpectedly plunged to the sea floor 300 miles off the coast of New England. Uh, it did this because they had installed a new device that was not very tested. Everybody wanted to make sure that whatever we had with nuclear missiles was out at sea and uh, yeah, a, a very big lack of uh, testing and retrofit. I think it was supposed to be in for uh, six months uh, getting retrofitted, and they kicked it out in three months. I think it was about half the time. Um, anyway, they put in a new valve, and that valve, uh, because of the low air pressure in it, turned to ice and clogged when they needed to blow the tanks to get back to the surface. It did not work. Uh, later, in uh, May of 1968, we lost another one. Torpedo blew up. But that's nothing. The Russians lost six. One twice. It sank. They picked it up. They fixed it two week, two years later. It sank again. No, well, don't know. Guess they uh, win a prize for oh. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call, call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. And we are back. Try to get through a handful of things today. We've got some emails already coming in. Now, where's my, oh, there it is. Wanted to get that up. Let's go back to the inbox. And uh, okay. What else we? Tomorrow in Seattle says, I got an InBev at $6.50 uh, for four 12 calls. That means Friday for those in Lutz, Florida. Uh, it was a, a day trade that turned into a daily swing trade. I'm not sure if I could uh, sell today before I lose more on the premium or hold it till tomorrow. Seems uh, I could be holding support. Uh, in Bev, take a quick look at this. Nope, whatever's going on there didn't work. Let's try this again. Hang on a second. Okay, wasn't sure that I picked the wrong one. Let's see if that isn't it. In EEV, guess is what it should be. There we go. Um, okay, you had the big day. Normally, I don't sell till three days later. That was it. Um, generally, one of two things happens, um, and that is that it got be pulled back instantly. Um, question is whether you should do um let's see what people were actually doing to see if they were shorting it nine out of ten times you you were going to do the right thing by holding it for three times doesn't mean that uh this time is the one that was going to pay off and B E V. okay um you had 30 percent short yesterday so that was actually fairly good. You got no move, uh, movement out here. Um, I don't know uh, how much you're in those calls for. But again, like I said, I, I thought the market was kind of going sideways. I think, you know, if you 
are not too bad with these things. I think you have to sit on them on your hands until Friday morning and we get those earnings. That is going to be the problem because that's probably when we'll start moving up again with some gusto or considerably lower. So I don't know what your trading plan was before you got started. I knew you were in InBev. I didn't know maybe you were in the calls. I think you just said something about that. Um, yeah, if you were in the calls, you probably had to take the cash. Um, I'll have to look at your messages before. I don't remember you saying you were in the calls. Maybe you did. Um, but even then, you know, you, you almost, you get a big move like that, you almost always have to give it three days. Um, that you've pulled back 50 cents, probably not a big deal. That uh, they hopped on and, and dived on with yet another m massive amount of shorts yesterday says that probably the best thing to do is sit on your hands at least until probably noon tomorrow and then decide whether or not you want to hold into earnings on Friday morning. But I have a feeling that if we get some decent earnings on Friday, that's going to take us back up above 2900 on the S&P cash. So just have to wait and see. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I don't know what your options look like. Apparently, um, you probably, if you were in them on that uh, earlier, you may even still be in the money. Doesn't say out here. You're on more premium. Yeah, I, you know... You took the trade, you got the bounce, you got a bunch of people short on this. I got a sneeze. And we're back. And it's that time of year. Just going in and out uh, from the air conditioning, which is already in progress in most of Florida. Get a little bit of the sneezes. Uh, but yeah, that's an interesting call. Um, but I said nine out of 10 times, you'd be right to hold those until Friday. Um, that it pulled back kind of large yesterday is interesting, but pretty heavy shorting yesterday and probably a little shorting today. You could get back up to 650 for Friday, maybe even higher. Um, I'd say I had to sit on my hands and wait till Friday morning. Yeah. Not an easy call. And uh, generally, eh, it's kind of like poker players. And if you watch some of the really good ones on TV, I don't play poker. Uh, I understand the game. I played it a bit. Actually won some low-level tournaments. Uh, but uh, never, I, I'm not one of those persons that can just sit around for eight hours. I get bored fairly quickly. I got to do stuff, get up, move around. The ability to sit there and remain focused all the time is rather tough and kind of a game for young kids, I think, the way they play it now. Uh, but the experienced guys that have been around for a long time that still make money, they all say, you know, as long as I did the right thing, and I'll go ahead and do whatever I would do to reward myself. As long as I know in my heart, I have a biting belief that I did the right thing. And uh, it doesn't always pay off in cards or in the stock market, but I think you did the right thing with InBev there. Um, if you're in a winning position, you always kind of have to sit on your hands and hope that it will become a much bigger winning position. If you're in a losing position, you always have to assume it will just get worse. Uh, I don't know if it's, is it pollen? It's everything. I'm itchy today, so probably it. Okay, what else? Okay, um, let's go ahead and start looking at some of the other stocks. I wanted to catch up on a handful and see if there were any movement out here. We we're talking about Ambrilla getting up to its resistance level. This is the um, June 6, 2018th gap down on almost 11 million shares. So yesterday we had 256,000 shares. Today, 118,000 shares. And if you look at that, not quite into the gap, uh, but uh, man, nothing in the way of volume. 
Um, let's see if we can't get. Uh, and you're probably hoping for about 4750 on that if you were thinking about going short. And, you know, you just don't, with the, the total lack of energy, other than this one huge gap higher that sold off almost instantly on the 6th of March, you don't have a lot, but it is hanging out there on the side. Um, I've thought for a while that we're going to go up and ring the high in the S&P cash, and that still may happen. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're at this place where it could break either way. We come back, we'll look at the Amazon.com and Amazon.bomb. That was the headline about mid-2000s, uh, 2000, Amazon.bomb, not Amazon.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. And uh, we were talking in the den during the break about uh, some of the poker players I've met, Daniel Negrano, a um, handful of other ones. I could drop a bunch of names, but mostly I've met them uh, in the air on airplanes, especially late 90s when poker really uh, uh, no hold, or hold em poker became a, a real big deal. I've talked to many of them. And um, in fact, one of the books that I think is probably one of the most interesting to read if you're trying to come up with a, a uh, 
uh, a business plan or a way of trading uh, is, and the way to think about it is a book about poker. Uh, and it's uh, from David Sklansky. I met him too. Uh, and it's uh, really, it's called The Theory of Poker. And he goes through and figures out exactly the right uh, mix for bluffing and actually putting out and calling hands and the odds on every hand. Um, again, poker, why I wouldn't recommend people play it for a living, uh, is an excellent trainer for actually trading stocks. Um, the reason why is it's a game where everybody doesn't know everything. Uh, if you're playing chess, both players know exactly where the other player's at. Uh, in game theory, they talk about games like the stock market, or I wouldn't call it a game, but the business of the stock market. Uh, and poker, though, as games where no one really knows everything uh, in the game. And therefore, you can't be blamed when uh, you don't know what's going on correctly. But uh, there, there's a lot of theory in that book that applies to trading. One of the ones I like best, I think there's a whole chapter in there about what you should do if you get two aces right off the bat. In poker, of course, you've got the best hand that there possibly is. Now, you can slow play it and try to hope to get a lot of money, or you can try to push everybody out and take the money quickly. And there's, a, you know, basically you want to do a little of both. He goes through the mathematics of figuring out how often you want to do it. Uh, but uh, a lot of times, you know, you'll have the best hand. And then, of course, two kings hit the the uh, flop. And if the guy has one king, you're, you're beaten. Of course, maybe an ace comes out and you go, I know I've got the best hand. Uh, and the question is, should you take the money early or take it later? And it really, those kind of things, even though they're in a game, if you can just play for fun, in fact, I think the, I don't know if they still have it around here, uh, but uh, a lot of the places had it where you could come in, play friendly games for no money. I don't know if they still have that. They had it over, I did a couple of them last year. But uh, as I said, it just, and I don't have the uh, patience to sit around and play ad nauseum for long games that last two and a half hours. Um, King of the short attention span memory. But a great book, especially if you want to think about making a business plan, i.e. you want to think very hard about uh, what a what game theory can teach you. He does it with a, uh, a uh, something that is at least analogous uh, to the stock market. Uh, but uh, at the same time, um, you don't have to make a decision in the next 30 seconds in the stock market. Uh, one of the things I actually like much better than cards. And, of course, you can uh, you don't have to trade. They don't call strikes in the stock market where you have to play and you have to put money in every single time if you're sitting at that table. You get to sit back and wait for your pitch, which I really did like and still do. Uh, anyway, uh, Amazon dot com to, to, to uh, he had six and a half million shares November 8th he had uh, 6.9 million shares December 3rd or December yeah December 3rd so what we're looking for is anything in the way of six or seven million shares last uh, to what do we last seven days three and a half million shares four million shares 3.6 million shares 3.6 million shares 3.8 million shares, 3.6 million shares. Today, 2.2 million shares. Now, if you're hanging out right at, at the resistance and you don't fail within about three days, um, there is a school of thought that you're going to at least break through. And in a great deal of cases, as we've shown in the last week, these stocks are breaking out and then coming right back into the trading range, especially when they don't have any energy like Amazon. Now, come Friday, uh, we'll see, because I imagine that uh, we're either going to have uh, a blowout uh, from uh, some of those stocks or a big disappointment. I don't think we're going to be sitting 
uh, flat on the day come Friday's close, uh, but we'll keep an eye on it. Uh, Apache uh, also doing the same kind of thing, up a little bit today, fairly light volume, 1.75 million shares. Um, of course, for the uh, energy, what do you call them? Dis not distillers. You know, I'll think of it in a second. Um, you had some nice juice hire. That was uh, on the 5th. Came up with five and a half uh, million shares. You've just been kind of going sideways with light volume. 1.75 million shares so far as you push back up in there. But as I said, we got a little of a pullback in some of these. Now you're going back up. You got no real uh, weakness. Uh, but as I said, if you get some closes below the nine day or three by three displaced moving average, I think that's really where you want to start looking at going short until we don't until we actually break those <coughs> boundary lines. <coughs> I don't see a lot out here uh, to get excited about. And again, no volume on the upside either. So you kind of have to sit back and, like I said, wait for your own pitch. Uh, what else do we have out here? Uh, ta -ta -ta. Alibaba, take a quick look at this one. Uh, just bouncing back up into the previous March 5th high, 188.08. That's 11.5 million shares. Today, 7.8 million shares, but kind of pulling back a little bit. Yesterday, you had 11.6 million shares. So you pretty much got to the same level, uh, but you couldn't hold it. Again, whole market's kind of looking like that, which is kind of bearish. Uh, and would suck you in, but again, you need some kind of break if they're just hanging out here at the highs. Uh, the worst thing to do is to get one of these uh, a little prematurely. Best Buy, testing the November 2nd high of $75.11 with 4 million shares. Uh, came up with uh, 2.5 million shares on the 4th of this month and gone sideways for now four days. Just 1 million shares uh, into that uh, high from November 2nd. Um, some people have been talking about Apple being a big impotence for Best Buy and why Apple may have been going up. Uh, customers have come back in. But, uh, man, this light volume also makes you want to uh, go, hmm? And two, we're in the next three to four months of the weakest time of the year for Best Buy. This one kind of setting up or moved back to about 62 bucks. I will be watching this one. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com. 
educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And as we uh, come back, serious logic, um, when you look at these SMHs, we certainly are up here with very light volume, which is not a bullish thing, although we are hanging up here. Uh, serious logic, $43.25. That's on the November 2nd high with 2.8 million shares. Today, we're up 157,000 shares. We're above, or we did go above that 40, uh, 43 25 level of 44 bucks. But again, when we're talking about light volume, we're not talking about, you know, 10% or 15%. We're talking about 10% and 15%. And that generally sets up some rather large moves. Uh, one of the stocks uh, that I think eventually goes to zero is First Solar. Uh, why everybody yells and screams about solar power, uh, the answer is without a solution to uh, very cheap long-term storage of power. Uh, solar is um, about three times more expensive uh, than uh, natural gas uh, for power. And your payback time, uh, if you're lucky, is 15 to 20 years, at least down here in Florida. Up north, probably even worse. Um, I love the idea. Uh, the reality is somewhat different. You had uh, three big gaps down and now you're basically filling that third gap one of the ones down here actually got filled before um, one of the reasons i've stayed out of this one uh, is of course uh, high short interest because everybody knows uh, this is an issue um, tesla of course came out with their solar roofing tiles uh, almost two years ago now and still it hasn't seen the light of day because it was actually, I think, two or three times more expensive than just regular solar panels. So the chance of ever uh, getting a uh, uh, a payback was uh, zero, less than none. Um, but, you know, he had close to 18% short interest on that, uh, on First Solar. Um, and here's another reason, <laughs> seven days to cover. What you want to see is this one probably drop back down to three days to cover and give some kind of signal at the same time. That may actually work fairly quickly uh, because of the uh, very light volume on the way up. You actually have uh, a thinner market for those shorts. In fact, your average daily uh, volume was about 60% in the last reporting period of what it was the reporting period before. So this one's a tough one, but uh, going into some very heavy down days, about 5.4 million shares on June 4th last year. Uh, and, you know, we're seeing about 3.7 million shares so far. So, you know, that's comparison to the 8 million or 8.2 million share down day of the 5th of June last year. Um, so, you know, you got some fairly decent... Uh, supply lines coming into this. I don't think anything's fundamentally changed in their business. Um, it is a business that everybody likes to talk about. Uh, and it's uh, filled with glory. 
uh, but I will uh, always go back to uh, what, uh, let me pull it up so I can actually quote him directly. Uh, and that is uh, da, 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 da. in tech if you're perceived to be changing the world it's okay to lie to investors Jim chain us and I think that's uh, uh, for solar also in a nutshell the question is when do these things uh, actually run into some problem and that'll be when the market pulls back also uh, to do what else do we have? Okay, now let's take a look, quick look at Icon. Where's the Icon here? There it is. I'm going to look at this one. One of the few ones down here, Icon X Brands, um, that looks like it's at some level of support. You've had some big days. It really hasn't turned up much. Uh, you're basically talking about a stock that, uh, what, buck 62. So not a whole lot in this one. Uh, you slam down fairly hard, uh, I can't. but uh, let's see what else out here. But, you know, it looks like a lot of people are getting out of the shorts uh, in this position, and the volume being kind of low is interesting, too. Uh, but, you know, buck fifty to possibly back to five bucks, pretty good possibility. Again, when you play stocks like this, you want to play them like a non-expiring option. That is, you don't go deep in it. If you were going to buy a thousand, maybe you buy uh, 100. If you're going to buy 10,000, maybe you buy a thousand, and you start off with that and say, okay, is it holding support? Is it doing well? And you kind of add as uh, everything starts looking better. Then, if you get a big rip, uh, especially with high short interest stocks uh, for a buck fifty, you can get at least 100% to 200% moves out of these. You already got your move here up to March 12th. So this one's probably going to go sideways for a while. Uh, and you want the volume just kind of uh, peter out and uh, come back into it. Anyway, keeping an eye on it. Intuitive Surgical, um, back up to its previous highs. We're looking at the October 1st high at 581. That had 750,000 shares. Uh, today, we're into that with 275,000 shares so far. So again, uh, very light volume back up into those highs. See, what else did I want to look at on my list of stuff? We've got a couple of minutes to go. Maxim Integrated Products, another one in that SMH sector. We'll look at that next. The um, ta -ta. December 3rd high, $57.24 with uh, 5.7 million shares. Got into that three days ago with 1.6 million shares yesterday, 1.3 million shares. Uh, today, 562,000 shares. And again, what you want to see is these things fail and close below the 3x3 three three displaced moving average. That will be the signal that these things are ready to roll. If they can hold above that, even if it's just a few pennies a day, they may have a day where they actually gap higher. If the volume does at that point does not come in uh, within a day or well, within a couple of days, um, but if it comes up there with light volume gives it all up, then that is ringing the bell at the highs. Um, I am not forecasting that. I'm saying that those are some various scenarios that I think you want to probably be looking at. Uh, other ones, uh, in the, uh, S, uh, in the SMHs that you keep an eye on is NXPI. 4.8 million shares on February 25th at 98.20. Got into that three days ago uh, with, a, with about 2.3 million shares yesterday. 2.5 million shares today is 1.5 million shares on a doji. Uh, don't have that closing below just yet, but it is getting close. When we come back, or do we have enough time now? Uh, nope, we're done. We're going to be uh, back for the last segment. We'll look at these SMHs up, up, up to the previous high. But again, not a lot of people coming into this store. We'll be back in a minute.
I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, 6, and 3 months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And we're back looking at the SMHs. And again, um, pretty significant when you can't get anywhere close to the kind of volume you were looking at before 112 on June 7th, 2018 on the SMHs. Worked all the way down to $80.71. We're all the way back up to 112.90 two days ago. Uh, that uh, comparison is 9.3 million shares to 3.9 million shares yesterday, doing 5 million shares, and today a little less than 5 million, 4. Eh, let's call it 4.8 so far today. So you're going to have darn near 50% volume. And on an ETF, that's like 25% volume uh, for an equity. If you got half the volume, uh, statistically, it's about like seeing 25% volume in an, uh, in an actual equity. So it's not that we've got very, uh, um, we've got any juice up here. It's the lack of that we've got any kind of destruction or a close below these nine day moving averages or three by three displaced moving averages that are telling us something. We also probably don't have a lot of people that are gonna do something before Friday morning on earnings, then into Monday. And of course, uh, it's gonna just start ramping up uh, to where we actually have a deluge coming in the last week of April and then into May. So not a lot of clear signals. Uh, Certainly, when we look at the uh, uh, volume for 
Uh, the markets, as we said yesterday, 6.4 billion shares. Uh, and, you know, today, what are we doing? Um, well, we haven't even made it to 4 billion shares. We may not make 6 billion shares today. So again, light, light, light volume. Generally, the best thing to do is if you don't have an abiding edge, is uh, as they say, the market does not call strikes and balls. You can wait for the pitch as long as you need to. And I think that's what we're doing. But I don't think that pitch comes until Friday morning and we see what happens. Instead of uh, trying to make the bet on what happens. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.